Yeah, I'm Andrew Harvey. I'm here to talk about a side project that I worked on just kind of on the weekends that I was um, interested in. It's called Beyond Tracks. It's a website, beyondtracks.com. Um, in the next like two weeks or so, we're going to launch a new version of it. Um, just been so busy with this conference, I haven't had a chance to do that yet. But So I joined OpenStreetMap in 2010. Um, and unlike uh, many other maps, um, it actually showed a lot of outdoor walking tracks. Um, I, I looked at other maps and either they were a topo map from 20 years ago, um, or it didn't have the detail, or it was um, another map that just didn't have the content there. But OpenStreetMap had a lot of these trails, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and the other thing is, uh, I could actually go in and edit it. So if I noticed that stuff was missing, I could go in and edit that and fix it up add in uh, new tracks. Um, so that was also really good. Um, and uh, you can download all the data. So uh, you can use it for other purposes, um, apart from just kind of looking at the map that's on openstreetmap.org. So I kind of had all those uh, uh, criteria met. Um, and I was really interested in how can I uh, take um, OpenStreetMap data and the information that many people contribute um, to it, so not just where paths are, but what the surface of that is like, um, and all kinds of other information about that that isn't really exposed on this map. So how can I make that more useful? So I thought, okay, um, I'll take, instead of uh, using the OpenStreetMap map, I'll take the data and start um, showing it in a different way. So showing information about how long walks are, um, what the, the climb is, um, photos from it, um, information about the surface, about um, uh, if this uh, trail um, is accessible or not. And I'll go into some of the ways that uh, we use OpenStreetMap to determine like accessibility of walks. Uh, so this is an example of the new one that's going to launch. Um, it's just got all these different tracks uh, from OpenStreetMap, um, but laid out in a way that people can search for them easier, um, as opposed to being map-based. There's also a map on here too, as well. Um, so it's all built on top of OpenStreetMap data. Um, so OpenStreetMap stores paths. So who's used OpenStreetMap? Who's edited OpenStreetMap? Okay. Yeah, so it stores um, paths. But um, although there's a route hiking relation, um, it's only really good for uh, well-defined and well-marked out routes. Um, a lot of the times things are just kind of, um, they're, not, they're not defined as here's a route. It's just this is a good way to go. You, you kind of walk along this track and then along this one. Uh, so that part, I couldn't really uh, upload that to OpenStreetMap because it's just my opinion of what I think is a good route to take for a walk. Uh, so I, um, I built a database of uh, um, walks on top of the OpenStreetMap paths and data. And so I've op uh, open licensed it. Um, it's all on uh, GitLab um, or open source. Um, and it's just in the uh, .osm format. So I actually use uh, Jossum, the desktop uh, OpenStreetMap editor, to, to maintain all that. Um, pulling tracks from OpenStreetMap and then using them as a source. Uh, so you can actually go in and look at that um, GitLab repo uh, if you actually want to get into the data. Um, so yeah, I mean, at the moment I'm actually just storing the whole routes because it's quick and easy, but um, it does mean that if things get updated in OpenStreetMap, I've got to go and update it here, so I'm looking to improve that. Uh, so here's the data. This is what um, the website looks like, um, and I'm going to go through how I transform that data into something that is more accessible to um, just kind of everybody, regardless of whether they're like a really technical mapping person or not. Um, so I use uh, GitLab. Um, they've got really good tools to automate this process so that um, I can automatically uh, run these updates of when the OpenStreetMap data gets updated. So um, it's set up to run as a nightly job. Um, and so I pull in uh, these .osm walk files, the Australian uh, OpenStreetMap extract, uh, the terrain model of um, the whole of Australia and a whole bunch of photos from Flickr and put that all into um, PostgreSQL with PostGIS extensions. There's a whole bunch of crunching that goes on there and it outputs these GeoJSON files um, and some uh, Mapbox vector tiles and, and that's the output that the web page uses. Um, so there's a whole bunch of tools that um, are really handy for that like OGR to OGR. Um, raster to PGSQL, so it actually loads in a PostGIS raster type. Um, and some other tools uh, to actually load in 
the Australian OpenStreetMap data into PostGIS. Uh, so um, from all of that crunching, we can actually generate this uh, elevation profile from that um, route, and that's all done. Um, you can see there's a link here. I'll, I can share these slides um, to how that actually gets crunched in, in PostGIS. Um, we also uh, generate these little spark graphs, which is just uh, the elevation profile. So you can see here it's quite a simple um, Postgres function. Um, and other things like calculating the ascent and descent, the climb, um, this is a PostGIS function, just kind of goes through every step and calculates the difference. Um, the other thing is uh, map matching. So there's a lot of features that are uh, relevant to people doing a, a bushwalk or a hike. Um, things like where there's toilets, where there's lookouts, um, all kinds of things. And all of that is mapped in OpenStreetMap or can be mapped. Um, so we pull out those features that are kind of along that track um, and, or very close to the track and match it back to the, to the track. So we, we know what features from OpenStreetMap are on each walk. Um, so we pull out uh, the SAC scale. That's a tag that you can add to features in OpenStreetMap, which says, is this like a kind of a basic walk um, that like uh, people with not much experience can do, or is this like a really demanding track where you kind of need to use your hands to climb or climb over things? Um, so it's a very broad tag, but it is useful. Um, there's also a tag called trail visibility. It's probably not the best uh, tag because it, it's very hard to to kind of separate some of these levels apart. Um, there's on the wiki page it kind of describes what the different levels are, but as a broad um, sense. There is like a difference between excellent and horrible. Um, so it is helpful when OpenStreetMap has this. And I personally try to add this every time I um, add a track. But um, anyone else who I see other people adding it, and it is really helpful. Um, but also things like ladders. So, so in OpenStreetMap, you can tag a ladder. So some people, um, they might be, get a bit scared of this. So we want to be able to, to know where that is from OpenStreetMap and show on the on beyond tracks that um, for this walk, yeah, there's a ladder and it's, it's like 10 meters high. So just warning people in advance. Uh, things like safety ropes, uh, you can tag them. Um, and so these are all things that uh, I guess like big mapping providers probably didn't think of. They're not, it's not their, um, it's not what they would typically map. Um, so that's why I like OpenStreetMap because we can map things that are interesting to, to whatever kind of interest you have. Um, rungs, so to kind of climb up a rock. Surface information, so uh, we want to know if it's sand, if it's paved, or if it's unpaved, because that affects how accessible the walk is, how long, how slow it's um, going to be to walk along it. Like, it's a lot slower walking in sand than on uh, concrete. Um, so yeah, it affects the walk difficulty and time estimate. Um, so we, we use all these post juice functions to uh, take features from OpenStreetMap, match them back to the actual path, um, and then work out how far along the walk that is. So um, yeah, we can determine how far along the features are. So uh, to know, say, for drinking water or toilets, um, are they so far apart? It affects how we factor in the accessibility of um, a walk. Um, and also ordering photos. So we, we have all these photos. They can automatically ordered, be ordered based on um, where they are along the walk. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other uh, libraries that we pull in, useful information. So I mean, this um, walk has a location. And from that location, we can um, there's good open source libraries to calculate sunrise, sunset times, um, weather forecasts based on the, so we use dark sky where you can pass in lat long coordinates. And it will give the forecast based on that um, position as opposed to kind of the nearest uh, weather station. Um, we pull in some open data feeds. So um, in New South Wales, they publish uh, park alerts, so we pull that in as a data feed. Um, and also bushfire alerts. So um, I know for New South Wales a ACT, they have CC BY open licensed um, uh, ex uh, open data that we pull in and show. So uh, where that fire is a certain distance away from the walk would actually show that alert on the page to say, hey, there's an active bushfire near this walk. Um, so you can see here is an example of uh, here's the walk, and we just pop it up there so people are aware. People have that information. It brings, it's really bringing together a lot of information sources and putting them together. Um, and just quickly, so 
we, uh, when you share like a URL on Twitter, it'll generate this um, nice card. And um, we have like this short description here and all that is uh, generated automatically from the data. So in this case, it says it's short. So we just classify, determine how long the walk is to say if it's a short, a medium or long. We say where it is. We say what kinds of things um, you would likely see. So that's not manually entered. That's if we find there's waterfalls or swimming um, on this walk from the OpenStreetMap data, then we will um, uh, populate that. Uh, there's other things we say, like if it's um, near the coastline, so in OpenStreetMap you can enter the coastline, then we'll say it's a coastal walk. Um, if it's uh, a long way from uh, roads or populated settlements, we say it's a remote walk. So all of that is just automatically generated to form this walk description as opposed to manually um, entering it. Um, and yeah, like the, we've implemented uh, search. So uh, OpenStreetMap has a lot of um, good detailed level of data um, that other providers don't necessarily have. And that was kind of one of my initial concerns or initial reasons of doing this so that, hey, we have all this great um, data in OpenStreetMap that's entered, but if I search it on Google Maps, it's not going to show up. Um, so it's great that um, we're able to use that. Um, so I encourage you to go to the site, check it out. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, we're launching a new version in the next two weeks or so. Um, I don't know if we have time for questions, but... Um, how about I, I just tweeted out a new schedule for next okay. one starts in three minutes. So okay, okay, okay. You perfect timing. Um, um, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, does OSM already support things like uh, does this trail have trail markers? Like is it marked? Um, yeah, so the, the tag, um, the trail visibility, yeah. um, the definition of excellent means that there's a lot of either guideposts to tell you, like, turn here, um, or there's just markers along the track. So you can kind of map it with that trail visibility tag. And whether the track is maintained? Yeah, so that's a hard one because, like, if it's really overgrown, typically the trail visibility, you, you wouldn't score excellent. Yeah. Um, it's not really, it, that's why that tag's, it's, yeah, it's not the best tag, but you can kind of um, enter that kind of detail with it. Yeah. Yeah, David? Thanks for the Have you yeah, thought about it. like mobile apps or even integrating with something like Street Complete to just get some of the extra information um, and Yeah, well, I think Street Complete is great <laughs> because um, if people who are going out and walking, uh, it'll just prompt them with, hey, there's um, a road here and we don't have surface information. Yeah. What is it? So um, you like you can use that even when you're going outside. It's not just for roads. Oh, I know that. I'm just not sure. So. Some, of them, some of those things are not sure they can help. Okay. No, yeah. Saying, yeah. Like, so. Like to be yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Like the street complete. It's a mobile app for everyone else that lets you. Um, it's basically. Uh, it gives you. It says, "Hey, this uh, street that you're walking on. Um, we don't know what surface it is. Please select from these options. Uh, is it paved? Is it unpaved? Is it sand? Um, so you can very easily just go out and map and contribute to OpenStreetMap." And so um, it's an open source tool, and it's good because anyone can um, submit challenges. So uh, for some of the things like um, trail visibility, they're probably not on Street Complete, but I do think it's something that we should try to do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's quite easy for everyone to contribute that. Yep. Um, I have a question. So in Victoria, I think Australia, there's guidelines on like what different types of track quality and distance yep. and how hard they yep. are. Yep. Like yeah, that's like a Australian standard. standard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like grade one to five. Yeah. Um, they actually have something about trail visibility and markedness yeah. as well that's like logical. Yep. Yeah, so um, I guess I've modeled it after OpenStreetMap, which tries to be uh, kind of work, it works globally. Um, and it, it can be hard to, to devise things that work globally. Um, we haven't, like for Beyond Tracks, we haven't adopted that Australian standard. Um, I do think there are some challenges with it. Um, in, in the way they classify walks because uh, like I think they say oh if it's um, uh, like wheelchair accessible it's grade one but you could have uh, yeah so I won't go into all the details but it, it's not something that we have done but um, yeah it's a good option. How many tracks have you got on your database? About uh, 380 but um, the thing is they're mostly ones that I'm familiar with uh, the repository for the walks is open source and as I mentioned like a lot of the time it's just my, a personal opinion of yeah take this track and then go this track so we can't necessarily enter that into OpenStreetMap um, so hopefully uh, if there are particular walks that you know of um, you can submit them in um, 
Couldn't they just get the name? Yeah, yeah, right. There could be the name, but sometimes it might be take this track, which is called like such and such name, and then there's another segment which it has a different name in another segment and it's about joining them together.